The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, and welcome to the third installment of the RJ Lee Group webinar series, Asbestos Detection in Spray-on-Fire Proofing Containing Vermiculite. I'm Kathy Gilkey, and I'll be moderating this event. Today, our discussion will focus on item number 198.8, the second analysis method approved by the New York State Department of Health for asbestos in spray-on-fire proofing with vermiculite. Our webinar will include a 20-minute presentation, a question and answer period, and a download of the webinar that will be sent to all attendees. A link will be provided to all previous webinars on the last slide of this presentation. If you have a question, please type it into the question box on your control panel. Only the moderator will see your questions. At the end of the presentation, Craig will answer as many questions as possible. We are presenting this webinar series to help clarify new guidelines introduced by the New York State Department of Health. In part one of our series, we discussed the history of asbestos in vermiculite and compared the two accredited methods. RJ Lee Group Method Lab 055.1 and item number 198.8. Part 2 explained the Lab 055.1 process, a method capable of identifying and quantifying regulated and non-regulated asbestos. Today we'll be discussing item number 198.8, the alternative method accepted by New York State, including a brief comparison of the two methods. Our presenter, Craig Huntington, is a materials specialist and consultant with RJ Lee Group, with over 30 years' experience as a geologist. Craig has worked on many high-profile projects related to asbestos, including the creation of a portable elutriator used for measuring resuspended surface dust at a building affected by the World Trade Center disaster. And now I'd like to introduce Mr. Craig Huntington. Thank you, Kathy, and welcome today. <clears throat> Previously, in part one of our webinar series, we presented the history of vermiculite and asbestos. In our last webinar, we presented part two, which described RJ Lee Group's Lab 055.1 method for the determination of asbestos in spray-on fireproofing containing vermiculite. In this method, matrix reduction is achieved through ashing, mild acid treatment, water washing, and aggressive acid-based dissolution. Polarized light microscopy, PLM, is used to identify and quantify chrysotile asbestos. PLM, scanning electron microscopy, SEM, and energy dispersive spectroscopy, EDS, is used to identify and quantify both regulated and non-regulated amphibole asbestos. Today, in part three of our webinar series, we will describe the New York State Department of Health method 198.8, polarized light microscopy method for identifying and quantitating asbestos in spray-on fireproofing with vermiculite bulk samples. In this method, matrix reduction is achieved through ashing, mild acid treatment, water flotation, and heavy liquid mineral separation. Polarized light microscopy analysis identifies and quantifies chrysotile asbestos. Polarized light microscopy also quantifies all the amphibole asbestos together, but does not differentiate between regulated and non-regulated amphibole asbestos minerals. The New York State Department of Health decision tree is used to determine which method should be used for asbestos determination of spray-on fireproofing. If vermiculite is present in the fireproofing, then one of the two new methods must be used for asbestos analysis. If vermiculite is not present, then one of the two older New York State Department of Health methods, 198.1, or 198.6 is used for the asbestos analysis. Both the Lab 055.1 and 198.8 methods are approved by the New York State Department of Health for the analysis of vermiculite containing spray-on fireproofing materials.
Item num number 198.8 incorporates a two-step approach for the identification and quantification of chrysotile and amphibole asbestos, including Livy amphiboles in spray-on fireproofing with vermiculite. The process begins with a binocular microscope examination to check for the presence of vermiculite. Following this step, there is subsampling and crushing of the sample, ashing to remove organics such as cellulose, acid and water treatment to dissolve carbonate and gypsum, and then PLM analysis on the sink fraction. If chrysotile is present in greater than 1%, as determined by PLM, then the process is complete. If not, heavy liquid centrifugation for amphibole asbestos is conducted and PLM analysis of the sink fraction resulting from that is done. Spray-on fireproofing contains several constituents that interfere with PLM analysis for chrysotile. Both the lab 055.1 and the 198.8 methods remove cellulose, paper fibers, gypsum, hydrated calcium sulfate, and carbonate by low temperature ashing, water washing, and mild acid treatment. Vermiculite is a clay mineral produced by low temperature hydrothermal alteration weathering of mica. The formula illustrates that it has eight water molecules in its structure. When heated rapidly to 300 C, it exfoliates or expands due to steam generation, which forces the layers apart. The left photo illustrates unexpanded vermiculite flakes, which exhibit perfect basal cleavage. The right photo illustrates expanded vermiculite. Exfoliation can expand vermiculite up to 30 times its original thickness. Exfoliated vermiculite has very low density, and provides excellent insulation, which is one of the reasons it is used in vermiculite spray on fireproofing. Prior to the introduction of asbestos regulations in the 1970s, chrysotile was added to the fireproofing to provide mechanical strength and spalling resistance. Chrysotile does not occur naturally in vermiculite deposits. After the asbestos regulations were introduced, fiberglass was substituted for chrysotile. In the photo in the lower right, you can see a fiberglass bundle in spray on fireproofing. Chrysotile is an asbestiform serpentine mineral mined and used extensively in North America. It is a magnesium sheet silicate and occurs as rolled sheets which form hollow fibers, as shown in the drawing on the lower right. The photo on the left illustrates the silky nature of chrysotile fibers. Preliminary examination of the as-received fireproofing begins with a binocular microscope examination to check for the presence of layers or lack of homogeneity. If layers are observed, then each layer is treated as a separate sample. The material is then checked for the presence of vermiculite. Finally, the sample is checked for the presence of asbestos bundles. This photo exhibits brown rust stains from contact with the underlying steel surface. A representative sample of the fireproofing is lightly crushed with an agate mortar and pestle as shown in the left photo. A minimum three gram portion of the crushed material is placed into pre-weighed crucibles and the initial weight is recorded. Then the ground weighed sample is ashed in a muffle furnace at 485 degrees C for a minimum of 10 hours. After ashing, the ash sample is transferred to a 250 milliliter conical flask and 
150 milliliter solution of hydrochloric acid and filtered water is added and the solution is stirred for 15 minutes. Additional water is added to bring the water surface to the top of the flask as shown in the right photo. The floating material is carefully removed in its entirety, rinsed, dried, and weighed. The non-floating residue is then filtered in onto a polycarbonate filter, dried, and weighed. The dried floating material is shown on the left. The sink fraction residue is filtered onto a polycarbonate filter and is shown on the right. This sink material is used first for the chrysotile analysis by PLM and the remaining sink is then subsequently processed by heavy liquid separation with centrifugation and is used for amphibole asbestos analysis by PLM. The first PLM analysis of the sink fraction is used to determine whether or not the sample contains chrysotile and if present to measure its concentration. PLM slides are prepared of the ground filtered sink fraction using a high dispersion liquid with refractive index of 1.630 or 1.680. The entire area on each of the eight slides is scanned with overlapping fields of view using cross-polarization with first-order red plate to determine whether suspect chrysotile fibers are present. If chrysotile is observed during the scan, a 400-point count is used to determine its concentration. In the PLM microscope, chrysotile is colorless. It occurs in fiber bundles and exhibits asbestiform morphology. The photo on the left illustrates a chrysotile bundle in plain polarized light. The photo on the right is the same fiber bundle shown in cross polarized light. These photos illustrate PLM images from vermiculite spray on fire proofing sink fraction, in which there is a large brown flake of vermiculite in the upper left and a chrysotile bundle shown by the arrows extending around the lower side of the vermiculite flake and extending up to the upper right corner. These photos were taken in a 1.63 refractive index oil. Heavy liquid centrifugation is used to separate the less dense minerals from amphibole for asbestos determination. The sink residue, which remains following the chrysotile examination, is dispersed into two centrifuge tubes containing density-adjusted heavy liquid of 2.75 grams per cc. They're placed in a centrifuge for separation. Heavy liquid centrifugation separates low-density minerals, such as expanded vermiculite, quartz, and feldspar, from higher density minerals such as chrysotile, pyroxene, amphibole, and mica. After centrifugation, the lower density float is removed from the sample as shown on the left-hand photo. The heavy liquid is aspirated from the tube as shown in the center photo, and the sink is water washed and ready for aspiration filtration. Once purified, the sink material is dried and weighed in preparation for the final PLM analysis of amphibole asbestos. Amphibole minerals in spray-on fireproofing may be asbestiform, non-asbestiform, or both. Asbestiform amphiboles found in spray-on fireproofing typically occur as individual bundles or naturally intergrown in vermiculite sheets. They are not added as a separate constituent to the fireproofing. The amphibole asbestos minerals typically associated with vermiculite deposits include anthophyllite asbestos, which is regulated, tremolite actinolite asbestos, which is regulated, and richterite winchite asbestos, which is not regulated. 
The left-hand photo shows the filtered sink fraction from heavy liquid separation, showing the abundant sheet structures in the sink fraction. The photo on the right is a 35x binocular image of the filtered sink fraction area. The sheet silicates in the residue are sitting on the basal cleavage planes on the filter. Item number 198.8 utilizes PLM for the analysis of amphibole asbestos. PLM is unable to determine the species of amphibole asbestos due to overlapping optical characteristics. Therefore, the results are quantified as amphibole asbestos, but are not distinguished between regulated and non-regulated minerals. Here we see PLM photos of amphibole asbestos between the sheets from heavy liquid sink fraction in a 1.630 refractive index oil. The photomicrograph on the left shows the PLM image in plain polarized light. The red arrows point to the amphibole asbestos fibers extending from the lower left toward the upper right. These fibers are difficult to see due to the presence of the brown sheet silicates in the residue. The white arrows point to the same amphibole asbestos fibers in cross-polarized light in the figure on the right. This is a summary of the results. The total asbestos content in the spray-on fireproofing bulk sample is calculated as the percent chrysotile plus the percent amphibole asbestos. The spray-on fireproofing vermiculite sample is classified as ACM, that is a, an asbestos containing material, if the total percent asbestos is greater than 1%. No asbestos detected means that no asbestos was detected in either scanning or point counting the eight slides using PLM. Therefore, the sample is not an ACM material. Trace chrysotile or amphibole asbestos detected means that no asbestos particles were counted during the 400 point count, but that asbestos chrysotile or amphibole asbestos was positively identified during the analysis. Therefore, the sample is not an ACM material. Chrysotile or amphibole asbestos detected at a specific percent means that chrysotile and or amphibole asbestos was counted during the 400 point count. If the sum of the chrysotile and amphibole asbestos exceeds 1%, then the material is classified as an ACM material. This is a comparative study of item 198.8 and lab 0.55.1 methods. Both methods utilize a two-step matrix reduction process prior to determining chrysotile and amphibole asbestos content in the spray-on fireproofing. And both methods, both the LAB 055.1 and the 198.8, utilize ashing and mild acid dissolution prior to PLM analysis for chrysotile. The LAB 0.55.1 utilizes PLM to identify and quantify chrysotile using a 400 point count method. The 198.8 method utilizes a 400 point count process to quantify chrysotile only if its presence is confirmed during the initial PLM scan of eight slides. The LAB 055.1 method dissolves vermiculite matrix prior to PLM and SEM analysis for amphibole asbestos. This dissolution liberates amphiboles trapped between the vermiculite sheets. The 198.8 method utilizes heavy liquid 
2.75 grams per cc, and a centrifuge to separate low from high density minerals prior to PLM analysis for amphibole asbestos. The lab 055.1 utilizes both PLM and SEM to quantify amphibole asbestos and EDS on the SEM to speciate the amphibole minerals. This technique distinguishes regulated and non-regulated amphibole species. The 198.8 method utilizes PLM to quantify amphibole asbestos but is unable to speciate the amphibole or determine whether it is regulated or non-regulated. We hope this presentation clarifies some of the questions you may have had regarding item 198.8 and the New York Department of Health's two approved methods for analyzing vermiculite spray on fireproofing. I thank you for your attention. Thank you for that information, Craig. Okay, it looks like we've come to the end of our time for today's presentation, uh, but we do want to be sure to answer all of your questions and concerns. If your question wasn't answered live, we'll respond as soon as possible by email or phone. Announcements of future webinars, including registration information, will be emailed to all attendees over the next months. Recordings of the live webinars will be made available after each event. Also note that we will be attending the events listed on your screen during the month of February. On behalf of Dr. Lee, Craig Huntington, and everyone at RJ Lee Group, thank you for joining us, and we hope you've enjoyed the presentation. <laughs>